Hi, my name is Eric Adams. I'm the president and CEO of InMed Pharmaceuticals, uh, located in Vancouver, Canada. Uh, InMed is a publicly traded company under the symbol INM on the NASDAQ exchange. Uh, I'd like to take this uh, opportunity to introduce you to uh, one of our pharmaceutical drug development candidates, uh, which we call internally INM901. This is a very interesting compound that we are developing to look at its potential impact uh, in Alzheimer's disease. Let's start out by first taking a look at what Alzheimer's disease is. Uh, as most people know, it has a major medical and societal impact. Uh, and uh, most of us are know someone or are associated with Alzheimer's disease. Uh, Alzheimer's is a subset of dementia that impacts a part of the brain that controls thought, memory, and language. Uh, and suffering from this disease leads to increased morbidity and mortality. Uh, there's two key hallmarks to Alzheimer's disease. Uh, that are widely recognized. One of them is the buildup of what are called amyloid beta plaques, and the other are these uh, neurofibrillary entanglements that are caused by tau proteins. Um, that's common pathology in Alzheimer's disease, uh, in, in addition to other things. Um, we know that people who suffer from this disease, uh, you know, have a shortened lifespan, uh, and of course, it impacts their behavior. Uh, in very different and, and often severe ways. InMed is developing INM901 as a multifactorial approach to treating this disease. So what can we tell you about INM901? First of all, it is a preferential signaling agonist for CB1 and CB2. Uh, it's a cannabinoid-based compound that's proprietary to our company, um, and it has a multiple mechanisms of, of action including the CB1 and CB2, as well as the PPAR signaling pathways. I'll talk a bit more about that in a moment. We've studied this in a number of uh, test tube as well as animal models, um, and we've shown a number of really interesting outcomes, uh, and we're uh, assimilating the data to be able to demonstrate INM901's ability to uh, enhance neuronal function, uh, to provide neural protection to the brain, um, and to uh, potentially improve behavior and cognitive function in people who may suffer from this disease. One of the interesting aspects of cannabinoid uh, compounds and the family of cannabinoids is that they can safely and effectively cross uh, the blood-brain barrier and enter into the brain where they are needed to actually uh, have their effect. This is not uh, a very easy thing to accomplish in pharmaceutical research, but these drugs uh, have that natural ability to do that. So there's a whole host of things that we think can be looked at in terms of uh, the mechanisms of action. Uh, and that's what we're doing right now is, is amassing this data and you know, working to fully understand what the potential impact is of this compound in a disease such as Alzheimer's. One of the interesting things about INM901 is that it interacts with multiple receptors in the brain. So as a cannabinoid in the cannabinoid class of compounds, you would anticipate that it would interact with the endocannabinoid system, uh, the CB1 and CB2 receptors, and, and that is indeed the case. But what we're learning about 901 is that it also engages a receptor called PPAR, and the PPAR pathway has been looked at extensively, uh, and multiple drugs have been developed in the diabetes space. Now, why is that interesting? Why is that important? Um, a lot of scientists have tried to sort out the association between diabetes and Alzheimer's. Um, it's thought that diabetes uh, is, you know, one disease that uh, increases the likelihood of developing Alzheimer's over time. So it's not an area that's fully understood. Um, but what's interesting is we have a compound here that um, approaches, you know, both from the CB1, CB2 perspective, but also from the PPAR perspective. So it may have multiple mechanisms of action that when combined can have a meaningful impact on uh, helping to, to resolve uh, the effects of, uh, of Alzheimer's disease. So what have we seen thus far from the INM901 development program? It's still early days. These are all preclinical studies. But we've started to see a number of different effects that uh, we think in combination may you know, provide some very important 
uh, progress in the fight against Alzheimer's. Uh, if you start at the lower right, you can see there uh, we're talking about the amyloid beta load. Now, we've seen a reduction in amyloid beta. Um, we don't think that's the primary effect, but certainly it's an interesting effect and, you know, something that other drugs have shown as well. But if you look at the other areas here and, and just above that on the right-hand side is neural inflammation. Um, the inflamed neurons uh, plays an important uh, and meaningful part in dementia. Uh, and what we've been able to demonstrate is that in the presence of INM901, we can reduce uh, neural inflammation. Uh, in the lower right hand, uh, sorry, lower left hand side, uh, you see uh, neurogenesis and neurodogenesis. This is the actual uh, neurons that I was talking about. And as I mentioned, as people age and as they become diseased, these start to shrink and pull away from each other, which makes communication between the neurons um, more difficult. Um, we have seen that these neurons actually regrow uh, in, in length um, and are become closer together in the presence of INM901. So we think that could be a very meaningful uh, development uh, for the Alzheimer's um, and other similar dementias. Uh, but the neuroprotective effect, this is really kind of the, the cornerstone of why we got into this, uh, this, this uh, disease. We've seen that 901 can provide significant neural protection to these, to these nerves, to these neurons in the brain, uh, both in normal individuals as well as in diseased individuals. Um, and again, these are all preclinical models, um, but this is something that these class of compounds typically does. We've seen it uh, in other uh, drug development uh, undertakings that the company uh, is pursuing, and we've, we've now seen this in the brain as well. So there's a whole host of things here that we think could, you know, add up to being a very important uh, product in the fight against Alzheimer's. One of the things we wanted to look at with INM901 is this neural protective effect that we predicted based on our research in uh, ocular disease and the ability of cannabinoids to help prevent blindness or, or, or protect the, the retinal cells that give us vision. Um, so from a neural protective side of things, we administer the compound to a group of cells, and with it, we then measure them to uh, against um, neurons that have been insulted with an amyloid beta challenge. And so the first bar you see there uh, at 100% is that the amyloid beta challenge led to 100% cell death uh, in untreated uh, uh, neurons. We then started to look at different uh, dosage levels of INM901 uh, to see if there indeed is A, an effect, and B, if there's a, a dose-dependent effect. And you can see that as we increase the concentration, uh, we increase the protection. So fewer cells died um, in the presence of INM901 when those cells had been exposed to amyloid beta. Uh, so this is a very interesting finding. Um, it was one of the foundational studies that we conducted that, that led us to uh, move on and, and start to look at other aspects of this disease. INM901 also demonstrated an increase in neurite formation and neurite length. So again, the neurites are these uh, brain cells that, that are in charge of you know, communication and, and everything that we do. Um, this is an interesting study where we took uh, these cells, these neurites, and then we uh, had a control group. We had a, a group that was treated with INM901, and we had another group that was treated with THC, the intoxicating cannabinoid that's found in marijuana. Um, and we wanted to kind of measure exactly, you know, what was going on with the exposure to these different uh, molecules. But just visually um, in, the, in the pictures at the top, uh, the, you can see that the control, um, that's what they should look like. So you can see kind of the full body with the, the finger-like extensions. Um, and that's what a normal uh, uh, neuron would look like or, or set of neurons. You can see in the presence of INM901, these become elongated and they also start to branch more. If you look at THC, you can see that they are broken up. You can see that they're not continuous. If you look down below, you can see that the length of these increased. Um, there was a slight uh, dose effect from five uh, micromolar to 10 micromolar, uh, but in general, they were all basically the same. Uh, regardless of the dosing, there was an improvement in neurite length. Um, and it was independent of how much we actually administered. The, the extension 
um, of the neurite and the branch in the neurite uh, signifies an enhanced neuronal function uh, in this model. So not only did we look at the effects of INM901 on a microbiological level, uh, looking at the actual uh, signaling and the uh, uh, mRNA in, in these brains, but we also wanted to see how the animals are reacting in the presence or, or having been treated with INM901. Uh, we did a number of different studies. So we started with uh, just a normal mouse, which is called a wild type or uh, the control mouse. Then we had the disease mice. And these are mice that have five genetic deficiencies that lead to an increase in amyloid uh, uh, proteins in the brain. And this you know, leads to a, an Alzheimer's-like disease in these animals. Uh, so that was the second group. And then the third group were the animals that were, were diseased, but then were also treated with uh, INM901. And so we wanted to compare how these animals behave differently. Um, so what we, what we do know is that we, we use the control mice as the baseline, and then we use the uh, diseased mice to show the difference between what happens when uh, you know, a mouse be gets Alzheimer's, basically. Uh, and then we want to, to treat them with 901 and see how they respond. Do they act like a normal mouse or do they act like a diseased mouse? And in all cases, what we saw is that treatment with 901 uh, led to the diseased mice starting to act more like normal mice than they did like the diseased mice. So we started to see these behavioral outcomes that we think are really important. Now, this is, you know, early stage. This is all preclinical studies. You can't, you know, uh, you, you can't derive complete, uh, you know, knowledge from, from such an early study. But it's really important to know that we saw these trends towards normal behavior. Um, and that just adds to, you know, the, the microbiological data that we've assimilated um, in, in the effects of INM901. We conducted mRNA analysis to look at what's actually ha happening uh, inside the brain of these animals who have been treated. Uh, and just to say, okay, we saw uh, important changes in behavior. Can we really learn anything from, from the mRNA in these, in these mice? What we saw is that the animals that were treated with 901, so these are diseased animals that were treated with our compound, the, the genes that are responsible for pro-inflammation, so in, that promote uh, inflammation, are actually reduced when they were treated with 901. And the neuronal function genes uh, are elevated uh, for the treatment group when we compare those to the uh, diseased animals. So in summary, uh, INM901 has demonstrated multiple pharmacological effects from uh, a, a whole host of different studies. We conducted uh, neural protection studies looking at cytotoxicity and natural cell death or apoptosis. Uh, we saw a reduction uh, in those, and we saw that neural inflammation was also decreased. In the neurotogenesis studies, uh, again, we, we saw that the neurites uh, were, were growing longer and that they were branching more, uh, and this indicates an improved neuronal function in those models. We also looked at behavior studies uh, where diseased mice were compared to diseased mice who were treated with INM901. We saw an improvement in the basal and locomotor activities, in anxiety-related behavior, in cognitive function and memory, as well as sound awareness. So, uh, you know, each data point here is pretty interesting, but when you take them together as a group, uh, we find it highly interesting that this compound is having, you know, probably through multiple uh, mechanisms of action, is having a whole suite of uh, impacts on uh, these disease models. So just to summarize uh, INM901, it's a small molecule proprietary to our company that can be systemically delivered uh, across the uh, blood-brain barrier. Uh, we probably will be able to deliver this via oral ingestion, so as a tablet. Um, we've looked at in vitro studies looking at and demonstrating neural protection as well as neurotogenesis. And in a 5XFAD animal model, uh, again, these are the gen genetically modified animals to have an Alzheimer's-like disease. Uh, we saw behavioral improvements in locomotion, cognition, and memory. We saw reduced uh, neuroinflammation, and we saw an increase in neuronal function. 
the next steps for this program, uh, we're going to be continuing with the research and development. Uh, over the course of the summer, we'll be completing a long-term study uh, that is going to uh, hopefully further validate what we saw in the short-term uh, mouse model. We're going to be extending into other uh, mouse models, in this case, uh, a PS19 tau model that is more uh, along the lines of a neural inflammation model. Uh, we're going to be continuing with our chemistry, manufacturing, and control activities to, uh, to make the drug substance and an oral drug product. Uh, we're going to continue to look at in receptor interaction studies, so mechanism of action studies, uh, as well as the pharmacokinetics of this compound. Uh, and then at some time point um, later into 2025, we'll be looking at GLP studies in preparation uh, for human clinical trials. Uh, we're also continuing to work towards identifying co-development partners. Uh, as you can imagine, uh, Alzheimer's is a very complex disease. Uh, combine that with the fact that there may be a diabetic uh, interaction approach here. Uh, and, you, you know, that it, it, uh, uh, it's something that warrants the input from a lot of different people uh, working exclusively in these fields. And so we're going to be seeking those kinds of co-development partners. Uh, as well, we're going to be looking to identify strategic investors, you know, people who uh, see the same vision that we do for INM 901 and our other programs, uh, and people who will get behind and, and support the company uh, in the long run.